This is a 2019 RAV4 from Lethbridge Toyota and is currently their best-selling model. I love the blue flame color. Some say it matches my eyes. Some don't. The RAV4 is completely redesigned for 2019, maintaining its quiet interior and comfortable ride quality along with abundant cargo and passenger space. The RAV4s have a new multimedia system. Wherever you go, you can always access the systems using the available 8-inch touchscreen. Connect your smartphone through standard Bluetooth to make phone calls or stream music. RAV4's updated Toyota Safety Sense plus Star Safety System work together to help protect you and your passengers from harm. And under the hood is a new 2.5 liter engine with 203 horsepower and is paired exclusively with an 8-speed automatic transmission. It's a delight to drive this SUV and it's a delight to reconnect with an old friend of mine, Randy Royer. We graduated together from Catholic Central High School in 1973. Now, Randy went on to become a very successful businessman working in the hospitality business. Over the years, he also became very passionate about politics and has even written a couple of books. We'll talk about his most recent one about why Alberta doesn't fit in this Canada. Makes for an interesting conversation. We caught up with him at the Travel Lodge Hotel. It was where he got his first taste of the hotel business back when it was called the Park Plaza. Who remembers? I'm Mark Campbell. This is Cool Cars, Interesting People. Come on in. We're going to the Park Plaza Cabaret. <laughs> How do you open these things? <laughs> Still can't open the doors successfully. <laughs> and you are getting older. <laughs> I, don't, I don't bend the way I used to. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> On our way. All right, so this is, is this, uh, what is this when you see this place? Now it's the Travel Lodge. Yeah. Uh, and this was the Park Plaza, of course, that became the Parkside Inn and then back to the Travel Lodge. Because you, your dad owned this, or you're, you're, well, tell me about that. He did. Tell me about the history here. Well, this is where I grew up. And at the, the Park Plaza. At the Park Plaza. <laughs> and there used to be a little place right here called Hannigan's. Yeah. And I worked in Hannigan's when I was 12 years old, uh, serving ice cream. Child labor. Yeah, absolutely. That was that, that was that was what my dad did, and uh, uh, Jane, my wife, yeah. uh, she would pedal there every day. And uh, when she was, I think she was like nine years old, and she, she was your wife at nine years. No, old. she wasn't my wife at nine years old. But I had eyes on her for sure. Really, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. So that's where we first met. Was right here. Oh the, wow. Yeah. And, Hannigan, and Hannigan's was a uh, what? Just ice cream and it was ice cream and hamburgers. And, I don't uh, remember Hannigan. Okay, nice. Well, it, it wasn't successful. <laughs> <laughs> the Park Plaza uh, was, uh, Dad uh, ran the Park Plaza, he owned yep. the operation. A yep. guy named Ludwig Pahuli actually owned the building. Right. And uh, and that's where we grew up. And I think I was, oh, at, at 12 years old, I was a bouncer in the bar. Uh, at, <laughs> at, uh, at 12? At 12, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, actually during uh, whoop up days, uh, myself and my oldest brother got into a fight with a bunch of cowboys. Uh, because they were trying to steal stuff. Oh, wow. Yeah, and uh, then I was 12 years old. And, and uh, it's a funny story because I was kicking a guy out of the bar. And this is when the liquor age was 21. Yeah, before we get to that, there's there's the old Henderson Stadium. Oh, Played the, a lot of football there. Football it's days. Now, it's now strictly baseball. Yeah, oh, okay. The Lethbridge Bulls. Okay, anyway, back to kicking some, some butt. So I was, uh, <laughs> I was kicking a guy out of the bar, and I was 12 years old. Oh, 12. <laughs> and the liquor age was 21 at the time. Yeah, yeah. And uh, this guy was arguing. And he said, no, I, I, I left my ID at home. Uh, honest, I'll go get my ID and let me back in. I said, no, no, I know you. And he was the same age as my oldest brother. Yeah. And I says, I know you're not 21, and you have to go. And he kind of argued a couple times. We went back and forth. And then a policeman comes up. In, this is inside the bar. Yeah. And policeman comes up and, and he says, what's going on? I says, well, this guy isn't 21 and I'm kicking him out. And the guy threw out the same argument that he was 21 yeah. and get, blah, get his ID, blah, blah, I'd save him a seat. I said, no, no, you're not 21. I know you. You're not 21. You can't come back in. And so finally he realized that I wasn't anyone. You're 21. <laughs> yeah. And he says, well, wait a second. You're not 21. How come you can get to be in here? And I said, I work here. That's different. <laughs> and the policeman says, yeah, that's true. And he push, kicks the guy out. <laughs> That's, a, that's hilarious. Well, it, it, I, I love the story because it shows what life is like in a small town. Yeah, yes, you know, yeah, yes, yes. And Lethbridge isn't a small town, but it has a small town. Yeah. Always says how does small town feel. 
and it's just such a great place to grow up. And oh, I don't know, nice. you probably, I mean, you must have had the same kind of Oh, stories. absolutely. Well, I was never a bouncer at 12 years old, that's for sure. <laughs> I, this, we're, we're going by what, of course, used to be the El Rancho, and that was sort of the place that I went and drank underage for the first time. If you did, I don't yeah. know if you did or not. Oh, of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, it, it's it's funny, you can, you know, when you've lived here all your life, you can kind of drive down the street and say, well, that used to be, uh, yeah. you know, and like that used to be where I first worked at Czech Radio and that doesn't exist oh, anymore. that's right. That's down that way. This is now the Coast Hotel. And of course, we're going down to uh, where we both went to, to high school. Yeah. Um, Capital Central is coming Those up. Those were good days. Did, so at, at, at the El Rancho, uh, when the liquor age was dropped to 18, Peter yeah. Sikora, yes. who we went to school with, yeah. uh, he and I went in, we were 16, we go into the bar and Peter says, don't worry, I know how to order beer because his dad was a pretty good beer, beer drinker. <laughs> he says, I'll, I know how to do this, just leave it to me. <laughs> so the guy comes over and, and uh, he says, we'll have four, and four of those glasses, they'll have yeah, four, yeah, and yeah. he holds up two fingers. <laughs> Because <laughs> somehow Peter had figured out you're supposed to say half as many as you actually want. <laughs> the guy just kind of looked at him, rolled his eyes, and went as good as got us for. <laughs> well, there's, there's CCH. And then, of course, across the street is LCI. Oh, yeah. The great rivalry. So do you think you could pull off the uh, the great Polish acrobat team today? <laughs> This, just for you, you and, and there was Paul Zook and there was Peter and you and who else was there? Someone uh, else? Don uh, Militia. Don Militia. Yeah. You guys used to do a routine in front of in front of the uh, assemblies. Polish uh, Polish acrobat team. Polish tumbling team. Tumbling team. That's yeah, what it was. And, yeah. And, and we had the uh, the grease band and uh, we had a <laughs> bunch of different incarnations. And yeah. I mean, the, I mean, I explain this to people that 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 in in Lethbridge, high school athletics is a big deal. Yes. And it, it still is, and it was a wonderful place to grow up because of that. Right. And uh, so I told them about these uh, assemblies that we used to have. Sure. There. And and I told them that they were so much fun that people that had graduated came back to watch the assemblies oh. <laughs> <laughs> and participate. But, yeah. But uh, it was it, the, the four of us did these things as you remember them quite. Yeah. I'm sure you remember them well. Yes. You used to live just not far right down up there. Here. Right yeah. down. Yeah. 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 Fifth Avenue. And yes, this, this is uh, Peter Sikora's Peter, house. Is yeah, right here. Yeah. We're, we're we're yeah we're giving you the whole tour. Yeah. Right yeah, there, and, yeah, and I discovered projectile vomiting after drinking his <laughs> father's <laughs> Polish vodka just over just down the street here. I, I was, it was uh, my first date. My first date. I figured, okay, I got to stop over at Peter's place on my way to my first date. So I got this vodka. And, 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 you know, it's like, oh, your stomach, you're good. this is going to be terrible. I'm going to get it all over me. I'm going on a date. So I discovered projectile vomiting. <laughs> 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 Jeez. But the, the, the worst part about it was that, um, you know, first date, you got to get everything right. And, uh, <laughs> uh, and so I go into our, our medicine cabinet at home and I saw this, this container that yeah. said, uh, kills germs on contact. I said, well, that sounds like a mouthwash. <laughs> So I gargled a bunch back, you know, gurgled while I spit it out. Well, it was Dettol. It wasn't mouthwash at all. <laughs> I didn't have any saliva in my mouth for two weeks. <laughs> Jeez. And I, on my date, I'm thinking I'm going to kiss her. <laughs> oh, Lord. My mouth was a prairie dust storm. I'm sure it was. A, uh, yeah. I didn't have a second date. That was interesting. <laughs> wow. Oh. <laughs> That's a bit of a surprise. Yeah. <laughs> so, what what was the plan when you were? I mean, you went, you know, doing your bouncing and your, uh, you know, <laughs> you know, graduate high school. You you were a star athlete in football, uh, and then and we won provincials in basketball. That was a big deal. Ba yeah, that was huge. Yeah. Uh, now, and won a city championship for uh, the Cougars, right? You would have. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, what were what? What was on the table for you with with options moving forward a, after high school? What was what was the plan, or did you have a plan, or was it just take over the the family business, or was it what 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 was in your what was what the what, hell was going on yeah, in my yeah yeah <laughs> square corners of my mind? Yes, yes. Um, you know, I, I had bought into the notion of, having, of being part of a family business. 
Right. So uh, the brothers and my dad wanted to uh, get into the hotel business. They wanted to extend the hotel business. Right. And we decided we were going to do uh, limited service hotels, which were just emerging at the time. D would define limited service hotels. Uh, no restaurant. Oh, basically. okay, okay, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, so just rooms, just yeah. and, and uh, low price, uh, right. you know, efficient plants. Right. And uh, so I went to business school in London, Ontario. Huh. Uh, came home uh, every year. Uh, I, you probably recall the parties that would come, <laughs> that would happen every time I, you know, we came yeah. home and everybody reunited at Christmas and summer, yeah, yeah. summertime. And uh, and then we got into the hotel business and we operated out of Lethbridge for a number of years. And then it was just because we became national, uh, it just became too hard to go back and forth. So we moved up to Calgary. Right. Right, and was was that was that a good thing? Um, you know, I've always I I still love Lethbridge, and uh, um, you know, but Calgary isn't you know was on the you know the national stage. We right. ended up doing it's something you needed to do. It's something we needed to do, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah, I I still feel feel very connected to Lethbridge, and so good. I appreciate you doing this because yeah, it's, sure, it's fun. Yeah, we're going to the Jab of the Hut. Jabba the Hutt. Oh, and yeah, there's Mr. Are. Jabba right there. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, all right. Here we go. Great. Sorry, I think I had the heat on the whole time, but I didn't know how to change it. So. <laughs> That's the driving the car. I know. Right? So, welcome to Jabba the Hutt. Thank you very Hi. much. <laughs> Thanks, <Mark. laughs> Thank you. Um, so anyway, you've you've established another co your, your company, your ho the hotel business. Is it something that you did you love it, or when you got into it, is that something that, um, or, or is it just sort of that's what you did? Well, uh, you know, it was the family business, yeah. and I always describe family businesses as either the worst thing yeah. or the best thing, yeah. and it changes every half hour. <laughs> Yeah. And I, I really enjoyed it, yeah. uh, um, and I and I miss that we're not in a family business anymore. Yeah. The camaraderie. Yeah. Uh, Peter Sikora actually joined yeah, us for yeah. many years, and so it was great. I had my two brothers, my father, and my best friend were all working together. Oh, and nice. that's, yeah. that's that's a dream. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. a dream. Yeah. yeah. What? So what were the what, what were the ups and downs of the, the the hotel business for you? Well, it's a volatile business, yeah. and so we, uh, uh, you know, it was hard to prosper, uh, yeah. and uh, and it's a continental business, so you know you're you're competing against you know the best in North America, and uh, and so uh, we eventually did prosper, which was nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but we went through some hard times, sure. and and what the nice part about that is it brought us together, and uh, and there's there's nothing as good. As working with people that are both your brothers and your family and people you trust implicitly. Sure. So I I loved it. I really enjoyed it, and I lamented that it that, you know that it finally had to end. What and why did it end? I uh, just I think the the brothers wanted to go in different directions. Right. And uh, but by that time we had prospered, and you know so it was yep. all good. Okay, back to you. <laughs> to <me>. So <laughs> so, what have you been up to in the last little while? Um, are you are are you a retired guy or what? what are you still no, more irons in the fire or what? I'm, are you? St I'm still too dumb to retire. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but we're working on a project in Victoria that's uh, um, uh, an ocean oceanside uh, twelve acre property. We're building a, a uh, kind of a village for uh, transitioning baby boomers, yeah. and uh, and that's actually gone fairly well. Good. We left Calgary, uh, disposed of the, all their assets. We left Calgary financially, still live there, but left financially. Um, yeah. Just before the oil crash, six months before the oh, oil really? crash. Yeah, yeah. So we got out in time and uh, used that wealth to do this project in Victoria, yeah. and we caught the, a nice upswing in Victoria. Good. And uh, and we're kind of in the process of trying to sell now. So, so so that's uh, and people can look into that. Yep. Work, work, yeah. Pacific working. Landing. Pacific Landing is that on our website? Yeah. PacificLanding.ca. Okay. Yep. .ca. Very good. Yep. So thank you for the plug. Yeah. Sure. That. That's very good. <laughs> Cheers. I, just, I need a I need a place to stay in Victoria. I just, yeah. Uh, no. Now I want I want to get into what has been a passion of yours since for forever, and that's you you you, you have a, a political thing. Or, yep. you're, you're a political guy. You uh, or uh, how? What, what's the way to describe it? You have a passion for politics. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's a good way to describe where, where it. Where did Where did that start? Well, it started in high school. That's, I think uh, we ran against each other, actually. We did. And, yeah, you did. won, you son of a... Anyway, okay. Well, I pulled facts out of my butt that weren't real, that's why. 
<laughs> so I learned a lot about yeah, politics yeah, yeah. right away. <laughs> but uh, you know, my like my interest in politics, I, I'm not a, I, I wouldn't, I, I kind of dabbled in politics and found out the, the ins and outs of it and found mm -hmm. out what are what the three ladies in Ottawa are now complaining about right. is that it's highly structured in a negative way. And so I got involved enough to know that right. and thought if you get too involved, you lose your soul. And the problem that the Liberal Party is having right now in Canada and any other party could have the same problem right. is that these three ladies maintain their nobility and they didn't lose their soul. Right. And they are now saying this system is broken. Right. And um, so what propelled my interest in, in our political thing is that that's fundamental to uh, every, er, all, everything that happens falls from our political structure. The goods, the bads, everything does. And I love people. And so if I'm going to help people, I need to help, I need to help understand that. Okay. So that was my reason. Right. So you've, you've written a couple of books. You've been, you've been active in like, um, and you're an Albertanist. Yes. <laughs> is that is that fair to say? I mean, like, how can, like, you, how can you not? Be? Well, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I, I, I think about, I, would you call yourself a radical or are you just someone who just wants good for everyone? Like when I like I'm, I, I'm I guess my point is you got your Alberta who wants to be their own entity in a way, yeah. and then of course there's Quebec who wants to separate. Yeah. Are are you saying that Alberta maybe would be better off than if we just went away um, from from the the Commonwealth? I think uh, um, just t taking taking a step back. Sure. Um, I I am deeply. Uh, Sorry, I don't think I'll say that. I'm deeply attached to Alberta, and, sure. and I'm deeply attached to Southern Alberta. Right. And I think it's almost a land thing for me, you know, you know, being in farming and, and all that stuff. I just, you know, I can feel the dirt in my hands. Yeah. And um, and so that's my attachment to Alberta. But I'm also a proud Canadian, very right. proud of what Canada has been and what it could be. And um, and I think that Canada has Canadians have something to offer the the world. And, um, and I think we're being held back by faulty politics. Okay. Uh, and I think, and I believe deeply, that Albertans inherently have a unique, uh, unique position in Canada and unique responsibility to take some action. And, um, and I think that Alberta is similar to the three ladies in Ottawa right now. It needs to use its sovereignty to wake up the rest of the country and to help us go in a better direction collectively. And if we were to do that, I think it would be good for the world. Right. So that's a very philosophical answer sure, to a sure. simple, simple question. Yeah, yeah, no, but I mean, uh, what, so what, is it, what can we do? What is it, what is it that, what, what are you trying to, to tell us to do? So in this book that I've written, uh, Alberta Doesn't Fit, right. top 10 reasons Alberta doesn't fit. Yeah. Uh, and I think the website is albertadoesntfit.com and there's yeah. a free download there, so that's free. my plug. Right. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> um, what it says is that um, we, have, we are papering over our history and we're trying to pretend we are something that we are not. Uh, we're a big, diverse country that doesn't make any, any economic sense, but we're good-hearted people that are kind of hanging on together because we're good-hearted people, for the most part. And, and so what I aspire to do is to put reality on the table to say this is our actual history, this is actually what's happening, these are our faults, these are our good things, and we need to have an adult conversation about what we are as a country and where we need to go. Right. And I think now is more important for us to do this now than forever. Right. Are you, uh, would you describe yourself, I mean, when you look at the, the various, excuse me, the various parties, the national parties, I mean, the Liberals, the Conservatives, or NDP, Green Party, all that, are, are, are they all at fault with some form of what you're talking about? Or, like, is there one party that you just say, this is wrong, you guys are, I mean, where, where do you stand on, on all of these? On, on the partisan yeah, issue? Yeah, yeah, Well, coming from Lethbridge, I was, I was a partisan, yeah. uh, as many of us were. Yeah. Uh, you know, we just thought, well, you hire a, hire a representative, he goes to Ottawa or Edmonton, yeah. and he represents you. So I was very, very partisan. Um, to answer your question, though, uh, my view of it is our basic problem is structural. And that what I talk about is our history and that our history of colonialism and that, you know, we severed our ties with the United Kingdom in sort of the 1800s and uh, our parliamentary system evolved 
so that it kind of made an imperial prime ministership. And that's what we're seeing right now, again, I'm referring to what's going on in Ottawa with the uh, Wilson-Raybould issue. Um, Justin Trudeau went out and, and got people that were not cradle liberals and persuaded them that he was going to run the country differently. And then what he did was he ended up being just as dictatorial as every other prime minister has ever been, yep. using the power of the prime ministership. And so you have this strange situation where these ladies, to their credit, have said, no, this isn't right. They use their sovereignty, their personal sovereignty to say, I'm not going to be swayed by partisanship. I'm not going to be swayed by all the other people that are speaking poorly of me. I'm going to stand up and say, this isn't right. And then what happens is that goes to a judicial committee and the judicial committee is appointed by the party whip, which is who is in turn appointed by the prime minister's office. And so you have the prime minister um, effectively, the prime minister in the prime minister's office, he's adjudicating whether he's right or wrong. Well, I think he's going to say he was fine. <laughs> yeah. Just a shot in the dark. Yeah, yeah. It's our system that's yeah. wrong. And it's the same provincially as it is uh, federally. It's the Canadian system as it evolved is not, it doesn't promote freedom and democracy. And actually, I'm going to say this too, because one of the things that I talk about in the book is that because of our colon, uh, 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 because of the way Alberta was settled, Alberta, Saskatchewan, and, and Manitoba, we weren't settled the same way that Ontario, Quebec, and even British Columbia. Those were colonies of Britain. The prairies were a colony of the colony. And so when, and, and the problem was that the, uh, the, the Canadian government, Upper Canada and Lower Canada, didn't have enough loyal British citizens, so they opened it up to the world. And what ended up happening is we had people from all over Europe came to Alberta and they came here for freedom and democracy because that's what the posters said, come to North America for freedom and democracy in their hometown, in their home countries. Yep. And so we ended up here on the prairies with this concept of freedom and democracy and individualism. And that's foreign to both Quebec and Ontario and the origins in British Columbia. And so if the world needs more freedom and democracy, it's the prairies that have to lead it. And we have, in my opinion, it's a responsibility for us to enlighten the rest of the country and say this is what the world needs because they aren't attached to it the way we are. So how do you get that message out? How do you find the influencers that can make changes like that? As, well, as, as Randy Royer from, from Lethbridge, used to be in Lethbridge anyway. And, and <laughs> you can still call me from Lethbridge, yeah, yeah. I like that. <laughs> I mean, because you, you, you need to have people on board with you. Um, yeah, and uh, um, well, first of all, you, you say, well, who do I know that's really smart, knows what's going on, and has some access to public? That's where your name came up. <laughs> and well, thank you really, for being the, willing. The really smart part, I don't know. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, um, th this, is, this is my First Nations, First People. Uh, um, I'm a big fan of first, for our, you know, our friends across the river. Uh, you know, Nelson Smallegs was, we were just talking about, he's yeah. one, of, one of my uh, guys that I admire the most from our high school days. Uh, you know, I have a, a great affinity, as I think most people in, in Lethbridge do, with the, with the First Nations culture. And, uh, and I, um, so the way they would look at it is your actions are what count. It, your results, you don't have control over that. Uh, but as long as, as, lo as long as you do the right thing, you're you're you're, yeah. you're good, yeah. and uh, so I just kind of think, you know what? I'm just going to try, sure. and, and whatever happens, happens, and uh, I'm just going to try. So what what would be a success for you in in all of this? The, the concept that you've got. Uh, I mean, like the ultimate crazy yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. dreamscape sure, sure. success. Um, my uh, and this is a little complicated, and <laughs> and so I, I I I need to preface it by saying. Uh, my intentions are that we wake up the whole country and that our country can have an influence, a positive influence in the world. Yeah. Going there, um, and I'm going to draw a parallel again with, the, with the, 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 the three ladies that I admire so much in, in, our, in our national uh, government. Um, I think the Alberta people have more strength than they realize. I think they have more, um, more fortitude and, uh, and uh, then they realize. And I think the people of Alberta need to speak. 
And for them to speak, one of the ways that I think would be good is for them to demand that their politicians set up a referendum in, in Alberta. And I specifically uh, am suggesting that, um, that we get our politicians to uh, have a referendum 18 months out. And the referendum from, uh, from the election that's coming here now. And the referendum should have one of three uh, questions on it. Yes or no? First, I, the one I prefer is we have a new constitution in the country, new political structure, new way of doing business. Yes or no? Do you buy into it? Yes or no? And that's got to be driven by uh, Alberta and it's got to be about freedom and democracy and structuring the structure to deliver that. Second option, which I don't like as much, is part of Canada has agreed and here's a new constitution for part of Canada. If Canada just can't do it, I think the third option is to start negotiations with the United States. Ooh. And wow. um, that's not my preferred option, yeah. Yeah. but you can't get attention on the first two if you don't talk about the third. Right. And um, uh, unfortunately, it, um, we're on a, on a trajectory where uh, Alberta is going to be the province, and it is right now, and it has been for a number of years, it carries confederation. And uh, if you want to read a good book about it, uh, read Peter Zeehan, The, um, the Unexpected uh, uh, Superpower. I think that was yeah, the in a, I can't, uh, Unexpected Superpower. Uh, we saw him last night, and he basically outlines that because of demographics, Alberta is going, and because of wealth, Alberta will, carry the, will have to carry the, the rest of the country, and it will do so until it's completely drained, right. which will probably be 20 years. And... Uh, so I think that, um, you know, that's just not a good usage of our intellectual capital, into, you know, of, our, of our people, and I think we can do better. But if you don't say you're going to do something different, it's sort of like, you know, dear, I'm, I've rented an apartment and, and we need to talk. <laughs> Ver, versus, uh, to me, the people that are talking about Alberta just leaving, that's, I've got a condo and I'm out of here. Yeah, you know, yeah, we don't yeah. need to talk anymore. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it would be a terrible shame just to walk away from the country, and it would also be a terrible shame not to wake up the, con the, the rest of the country and have a, an adult conversation. Right, right. Um, so you, on a national scale, we've talked about that, but what about on the, on the, the political uh, government, uh, Alberta? How are, how are we doing with that? How is that looking for you? And, of course, we've got the election. What's, what's uh, going through those, uh, those four corners of your brain right now about, about that? Well, what I, what I learned about politicians is that um, they're very focused on their job. Yeah. And, uh, and they will do whatever it takes to make sure that they either get the job or continue their job. And, um, and so they're not really up for looking at the real issues. And so the real issue in Alberta right now is how does this fit into Confederation? And how does Canada fit into the changing world? And United States, for example, um, we've experienced 70 years of peace and prosperity because America has subsidized the world order. Um, if you look at what Obama has done and you look at Trump and what's probably going to happen next, you realize that um, the United States no longer wants to do that. It wants to take care of itself. So how does Canada fit in that? And it doesn't look at security the same way that it has. And, and Canada has... Uh, had a favorable trade and, and economic relationship because we had this security trump card that you know the Russians had to shoot ICBMs over Canada to hit the United States. Yeah. So we don't they don't we don't have that security trump card anymore. Careful when you say trump card. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, I think he is such a card. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we don't we don't have that. Uh, I'll go. With, I don't have that card to play anymore. Yeah, yeah. And and you saw in the trade negotiations that. We need the United States a lot more than the than, than United States needs us. Right. And when we signed the FTA and NAFTA afterwards, what we did was we threw away our national economy and we integrated continentally. And so every, if you look at it, every province trades more north-south than we do east-west. And, uh, and then we don't have free trade between provinces, but every province has free trade with the United States. It is an insane system, mm -hmm. right. and it has made us more vulnerable to volatility in the United States, more vulnerable to the he who shall not be named anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and so, like, it's insane that we're putting ourselves in this position. Like, we're over a barrel, 
and we're looking at our partner who's also over the barrel and say, yeah, this sucks. <laughs> but let's not take yeah, care of each yeah. other, you know. Yeah. Where, do, where, does, where does your uh, ideologies fit in with some of your uh, perhaps influential or other political friends that could, could influence what you're talking about? How do they, how do they react to your, your, like your book or to what your thoughts are? Um, so um, the nice thing about the book is because it, it, uh, it, looks at, it sort of looks at history and explains why we are where we are, uh, talks about colonialism and talks about how, you know, first, and that's a, a first, uh, indigenous people have the same issue. Mm. They hate the colonialism of the Canadian government. Alberta hates the colonialism, not the Alberta government, the federal government. Okay. Albertans hate the colonialism that we have inherent in Canada. So there's actually a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, collaboration that can be found. Um, to answer your question, um, when I started writing this book, I started three years ago, right. and I thought I was going to have to wake people up to the issue. Um, when I first kind of did a little test issuing and some people read it, I very quickly found out everybody knows the issue. The question is, what do we do? Right. That, that's and so it, like everybody deep uh, the, the the feedback on the book is people have aha moments that oh that's why it's like that. Yeah. You know, everybody feels and understands that it is that way and it's not right, but they don't understand why. And, and what I aspire to do is if I can help them understand why it is that way, then we can start talking about solutions. Right. And we desperately, desperately need solutions. Yeah. Now, is this, um, part of this is fueled by, uh, for, because you're from the business sector, or is it just fueled from an emotional side of you or just we got to do it right what where, do, where does this get fueled great question um not, not not so much because i was in business i mean i i went to business school and what have you so i kind of understand economics and and understand you know the the broad scale stuff um but most of it was because of my experience in business so i've worked across canada you know, I built hotels in Quebec and, you know, worked in the Maritimes and, you know, Vancouver, lots and lots in Ontario. Love the people of Ontario. They're just great people. But I understand the differences. And we're not all the same. Uh, we have some commonality, but we're not all the same. And I've worked in the United States and found out what that was like and in Mexico also. And, uh, and a key thing for me in today's, today's world is I spent a lot of, Peter and I, Sakura, spent a lot of time in uh, New York. And uh, so when he who shall not be named <laughs> comes out and says some things that look just totally crazy to us, yeah. I look at it and go, that is totally the New York mindset. That's yeah. exactly how they look at us. We are rubes in their minds. Mm. We're insignificant, but we don't know we're insignificant. Right, right. And we don't do anything to change, to rise above our inherent insignificance. Yeah. So the best thing for me is that through the travels, I was able to see and understand the world a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And then I did the political stuff, which helped me understand, you know, the problems of our political structure. Sure. I mean, we've, we've sort of gone around a little bit, but let's, let's get right to it. Donald Trump, <laughs> there, I've said it, I've said it out loud. What's, where, I mean, from your perspective, what's, what's, what's your take on him with a guy who gets elected? He's, he's, you know, I just, I'll just leave it at that. What, what's your, where, where do you take, Take his him and what he's done and what he's doing and etc. So I mean the fir <laughs> first thing to form a, an opinion you need to ask people in the United States and and I kind of look at it like I respect the United States mm -hmm. he's their president therefore I respect the position and I respect him I don't understand it completely yeah. but so reach out and, and ask people and so uh, Gene and I were actually in uh, South Beach in, in Florida and of course, in South Beach, you hang around the pool. Yeah. So <laughs> hang around the pool, you start yeah. talking to people. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a couple from um, uh, from um, Columbus, Ohio. Great hockey team. Yeah. Uh, and glad we beat them. <laughs> yeah. uh, Columbus, Ohio, and they were uh, they were a black couple. Uh, uh, so they had come from you know kind of the, the rougher neighborhood in Akron, moved to uh, to uh, Columbus, and were prosperous and were doing you know middle class, doing well. They said. Everybody in their economic sphere and their business sphere love Trump. They love him. They love what he's doing. And he said, when you go back to the neighborhood at home, you don't kind of talk about it all that yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he said, they said, yeah, we love him. And, and the way he put it, I thought was funny. He says, love what he's doing, 
But you know, yeah, when he you see his antics on TV, he says, "Grab some popcorn, turn the TV, on, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> watch the show." Yeah, yeah. So I, I think that there's two sides, um, two sides to him. But what what Trump is is doing, which is and he and he has, I think he has the ear of America, is he saying. America is no longer going to subsidize through blood and treasure the world order that it has for the last 70 years. Mm -hmm. And Obama tried to just walk away from it. And uh, Trump is trying to change it to America's advantage. Mm -hmm. And he's trying to wake up, he's trying to wake up countries like Japan and China and what have you. And he just said, America's not going to do it anymore. And I think Americans want that. Oh, interesting. So. If I can just say, are you a fan of him? I uh, no, I'm I'm not. Yeah. Um, I, and it's tough to be because you know the antics are insane. Yeah. Uh, but I was very much a fan of the people that elected him because they didn't do what they were told to do. We were in my daughter and I were in Russia, and uh, this is this. Uh, I'll connect it for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa! <laughs> Before the election, we were in Russia, and um, our guide, after a few days, kind of it takes Russians a while to open up. But after a few days, he opened up. And he told us what Russians thought of our democracy. And he kind of was lumping you know, us together with the United States. And he says, we don't think you have democracy. You do what you're told to do. You, 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 there's a, a political elite and they, you t they tell you what to do and you do it. And I, like you, reacted like, no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's a good point. Yeah. What people in the US don't realize is that all sides in Russia wanted Trump to win. Putin, for his reasons, his the opponents in Russia also wanted to win because that showed Russians that the American democracy was actually strong because they didn't do what they were told to do. Hmm. And uh, so I was, I, I say that story because I was happy that he got elected because it was America not doing what the political elite told them to do. Right. What could the, how, what would happen in, what needs to happen in, uh, in Canada then to, sort of not do what we're told to do. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, that, this is where I think yeah. that Albertans need to step up. Yeah. Because Albertans are being told, just be quiet. Just, again, I'm, go back to the three ladies. They're told, sit down, shut up, keep your hands on the table. Yeah. And just be a good party member. That's what we do. Yeah. I'm sorry you missed the memo, but that's what we do. Yeah. Alberta's being told exactly the same, same thing. Sit down, shut up, and just keep your wallet out. Mm -hmm and we'll just take, keep taking whatever we need. And and your disagreement that's been happening for years and we kind of told, said, hey, you're just a bunch of cowboys, you know, just shut up. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're told to consent and be loyal. I think the greatest form of loyalty is to actually disagree. Because if you express your disagreement and you can make both parties better for it, I think that's true loyalty. Uh, and that, and, and uh, I think that's what Alberta needs to do. We need to express fully and confidently that we disagree. Right. We disagree with the structure, we disagree with the way the country is run, and we disagree with the underachievement that is going to in fact, it is infecting everybody in this country. We have so much underachievement, it's incredible. You know, we've turned Quebec into a, into a, uh, uh, a state that you don't actually have to work because you can get the money from the government, who in turn gets it from Alberta. Right. right. And so, uh, you know, it, my my dreamscape and is that my dreamscape is that Alberta can take a stand, show the rest of the country that we're underachieving, and that we could all come together and say, you know what, we got bigger issues to fry than try to hurt each other, which is what we're doing right now. Uh, and it's kind of. You know, it's like a family business. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it's the best and worst thing yeah, every yeah, half hour. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, recognize that this is like a family business, and we're way, way better off to confront the changes that America is causing, is and is going to continue to cause. You know, it, it's not just right. Trump; it's the next guy is going to stay the same way. He's, he's they're going to take America out of being the world policeman and 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 and, and giving us freebies. It just it's not going to continue. Yeah. So what we have to do is we've got to come together, form a nation, form a, a positive nation with freedom and democracy, with an economic strategy that makes sense, and then show the rest of the world that we can do it. Well, I mean, we still have an election that's coming up in the, provincially. Yeah. As someone who says, I disagree with whatever, 
Is this something that you, where you would say, I'm not going to vote on this because I disagree with it, or is this something you will vote on for someone in this next provincial election? I will, I will vote for anyone that is going to support the idea of Alberta standing up for itself. So who is that? Well, Jason Kenney is close. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, uh, Alberta Party is pondering it, I mm -hmm. believe. Um, I think that, uh, um, with all due respect to our current uh, Premier, who I think discovered halfway through her term, I think she discovered Albertans, that we weren't that bad. Mm -hmm. And uh, and she's become, she herself has become a good leader. I, I give her lots of credit for that. Um, but I think, I think uh, we need to change, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, you know, everything is plus, pluses and minuses, and, and I don't want to be partisan, but I think right now, whoever is going to stand up and address the biggest issue in, prov in this province, which is how do we fit with the rest of the country, um, I'll vote for them. Interesting. Um, so your book, let's just uh, make sure we get everyone knows where the book is. It's online, and that's the only place it's available. Yes. And, yep. the, and the website is? Uh, albertadoesnfit.com. Okay. And uh, it's not about separation. It's, no, right. about, it's about having an adult conversation in the country. It's his, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good. And uh, it's a free download, yeah. and, uh, and we do take donations if you feel so inclined. <laughs> uh, but the money is, will be used to try to uh, um, broaden the, uh, yeah. the, the dissemination of information. Yeah. So anyway, just to, to kind of wrap it up, just, just your feeling of being back in Lethbridge now. And, and I, I know you've got some really special friends that are here. These are, go ahead, name some people. Paul Zuck. Okay. As I was saying earlier, he's the only guy in all my political worlds. You know, I've had, I, for example, I've had dinner with Pierre Trudeau, you know, six times. P Pierre the dad. P Pierre the dad. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Pre Justin the son. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and you know, so I've 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 met those guys. I know lots of guys that have been very successful in business. Paul Zook's the only guy that I will say is my hero. Wow. And he's here, and he's holding this this. You know, he's a, a supporter of this community. Yeah. And he's the guy. Uh, they ought to talk about him. Uh, Andy Bodine, salt of the earth, um, you know, the Dudas family, uh, you know, those guys that we went to school with, they're all great. Yourself, you've been <laughs> such a pillar of the community here. It's just, to me, it's Tom Little. Yeah. Uh, you know, Tom is, there's nobody at Boost Lethbridge more than Tom Little. Yeah. Um, the Rohovis. The Rohovis. Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah. Greg yeah. is, Greg, to me, Greg is my uh, pillar oh. in, in, a, in a way because he doesn't think the way I do, uh, but he's very firm and logical and he gets it yeah and so whenever I have an idea that's way out there I got to circle around Greg and see what he thinks <laughs> <laughs> well it's, it's it's been fun to kind of talk about from our era from the people that we know it's been cool I mean I know there's there are other people at other schools that were okay too right in yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but not like the the class of 73 <laughs> right? class of, all right. Cheers, class all right, of 73 all right there you go <laughs> Randy Warren thank you sir all right